Okay, you can turn in your Bible to Romans chapter 12. I'm going to talk to you today about the single most important character trait for saved or lost people. doesn't matter who you are. The most important character trait that you can form in your life is nonconformity. Okay? I'm going to show you what the Bible has to say about it, what the King James Bible has to say about this. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He died for you. Or are you going to die for him? Hmm. Uh, well, you know, I, I, I just kind of, I got saved and I can just kind of do my own thing now and whatever. No, no. Um, he purchases you with his blood. You are bond servant. You're to present your body a living sacrifice to the Lord. The Lord says, okay, get rid of that. Stop doing that. Stop saying that. Stop thinking that. Stop listening to that. That's your reasonable service. Spiritual sacrifices. But look at verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be not conformed to this world. Um, you can't conform to this world. I'm going to show you the other scriptures on this whole thing there. But, uh, you know, he doesn't say, and um, be not conformed to this world if you really want to serve the Lord or if you want to be a, you know, be not conformed to this world. It is a command. Uh, there are a lot of commands. You know, people say about, oh, good, good we don't have to live under the Ten Commandments and whatever else. And, you know, the Old Testament law had so many commands and whatever. Oh, uh, there's a lot of New Testament commandments. I have a study on that I did many years ago. And the whole thing is, it's all for your good. So, let's go to the next one. 1 John chapter 2. Why can't you be conformed to the world? Well, I'm going to show you. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. There was an old stupid saying out there that say, you know, don't be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Uh, well, and I've ripped on that thing for many years and People get upset at me that, that profess to be Christian, whatever. <laughs> what else is new? Um, but the fact of the matter is it's the exact opposite. Don't be so earthly minded that you're no heavenly good. That's the fact of the matter. You don't think about things down here on this earth. Right? You're not supposed to love the world. Well, you know why? Because when you love something, you conform to it. Okay? Um, let me repeat that. You conform to what you love. You know what I mean? You conform to what you love. I'll say it one more time. Do you love your wife? Men out there? Do you conform to her needs? I hope so. If you love her, you will. Nothing wrong with that. But uh, do you love money? Do you love mammon? You'll conform yourself to mammon. There are certain ways that you can make money, make a good living, get involved with the right uh, secret societies, the right fraternities and things like that, and uh, you can make a lot more money. Get that nice church building and uh, you preach in that certain way, smiling, happy, nice, you make more money. You conform to the world system. Let me ask you a question. Why did Christians ever decide to build church buildings? And I said Christians, because you go back into the 1700s and 1800s and things, a lot of those people that were building the church buildings, I believe they were probably saved. Why did they do it? Because they wanted to look like the rest of the world. They wanted to be respectful. You get a guy like Roger Williams, um, who they credit with being the first Baptist in America and whatever else. And uh, when he was alive, they were meeting out in the fields, meeting out in the woods, meeting in people's homes, whatever else, like real Christians have done. After Roger Williams died, the group that he had founded built a church building, the oldest Baptist church in America. It was in the Independent Fundamental Baptist Catholicism studies. Um, they used the state lottery and things to, you know, 
get the thing going. And then one of the Rockefellers actually gave money to keep the church going and to restore it and whatever else. All the proof is shown in the, in the studies there. But why did they do that? Why did those people that started out, right? Uh, why did they build a church building? Because they wanted the respectability of meeting in a nice building. Not out in the weather, out there in the fields and whatever else. They conformed. Yeah. That's why people do that. They love the world. But our text there says, verse 16, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. But yet you love the Lord. You say, I love the Lord very much and whatever else. Okay, are you concerned with the things of the world? James chapter 4, verse 4. If you don't know these scriptures, easy ones to remember. James chapter 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Well, no, I think I can be a Christian celebrity. No, you can't. No, you can't. You know, I see that these, these things, you know, there's this Tyson Fury boxer guy and, and he, gives, he gives glory to the Lord and everything else, you know. I just want to thank Jesus for, for helping me to win this fight. I felt really good about it and I, I've gained all the heavyweight titles in the world and so he's an enemy of God. So, well, no, the media came out against him because he said women look good in dresses and whatever. I've looked into the whole thing. People send me stuff, you know, and, and, you know, and, and he came out against sodomites. He didn't come out against sodomites. He just said that there are some thir certain things that need to happen before the Antichrist, you know, comes or whatever else. And, you know, sodomy would become normal and whatever else and pedophilia would be, you know, looked, not looked down upon or whatever else. He didn't say that, so, you know, oh, there, there's gay people in my, in my crew and whatever else and stuff. He's a worldly, compromising, lost, hellbound sinner. I saw him interviewed the one time, again, when this whole thing came out, I looked into it just to see, is this guy real, for real, or whatever? And one of them, he's talking with this you know, woman, and he's, yeah, my, my personal relationship with Jesus. And the next, he's making sexual comments to her, perverse things that he's saying to her. And then he just, you know, rips off a bunch of profanity and whatever else. Dead giveaway of a lost person. It just cracks me up. And people get mad at me for that, you know? Um, like it should be okay. I guess it's some kind of a mark of spirituality to use profanity as a professor, as a, as a Christian, you know, and I'm not saying, Oh man, that slipped out of my mouth. Just bleep, 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 bleep. You're not a Christian if you're doing that. Just the way it is. But you'll see this with these sports stars and whatever, and with, with other people and whatever else. And I remember it was at, uh, Tom Selleck, I think, this movie star, and he talked about his relationship with Jesus, you know, and he's been a Christian for years. I'm thinking, yeah, okay, and you're in movies, and you're, you know, Magnum P.I. TV show back in the 1980s and everything else, and he's a Christian. No, he's a friend of the world. That makes him the enemy of God. What's the other guy? Uh, uh, the guy that was in the home improvement thing, Tim Allen, I think his name is. You know, and I saw a thing about his, you know, he's got a relationship with God. He's a conservative Christian that works in Hollywood. <laughs> you know, yeah, sure, yeah, uh-huh, right. You know, people are so gullible. I mean, Hitler, Hitler claimed to be a Christian. He was loved by the world in his day. I guess he's in heaven waiting for us then, there, you know, apparently. <laughs> According to some people's standards bunch of fools that they are. John chapter 15. He said, what was the problem? They're conforming to the world. They don't want to bear the reproach of Jesus Christ. John chapter 15, verse 16 through 21. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Something to remember there. Oh, I believe in Jesus. I've, I've, I've forced him to save me because I just said that I believe in him. So, you know what? No, no, the Lord has to choose you. Okay? And ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Notice, you have to bear fruit, and your fruit is supposed to remain. 
I've led 3,000 people to the Lord in the last week out in my soul winning efforts. Where are they? Are they coming to your church there, Baptist? Are they, have their lives changed? Well, no, you know, only two of them came to church, you know, and then they were gone the next week. But, but they were led to the Lord. They prayed the prayer. I led them through my choreographed, you know, just typed out little soul winning thing that I do. I led them through it and they got saved. Uh, no, they didn't. You didn't bear real true fruit and your fruit didn't remain. Verse 17, these things I command you that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. You know, there's another place of scripture here we're not going to go to, but just one of the amazing things. Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he says about, I'm going to be killed and the world shall rejoice. You know what happened when Jesus died? The world rejoiced. The vast majority of people were happy about it. What would happen if you were killed? How many people would really be sorry? How many of your relatives would come out and say, I could have seen this coming, cultic nut that they were turning into and whatever. Do you miss them? Yeah, whatever. You know, they changed so much. They got involved in that whole cult thing. I just couldn't stand to be around them anymore. Or would it be, oh, everybody's friend, so-and-so, oh, they, they just were loved by everybody and, oh, it's just going to be so hard without them. I mean, what do you think would happen if I get killed? What do you think the, uh, a lot of the goonies out there on YouTube, what do you think that they would do? They would rejoice. Why? They hate me. You better make sure that the world hates you. And you know how you do that? Don't conform to the world. Go against the world. Well, I just think I can be a Christian. I can be gentle and I can be kind and loving and sweet and everybody can like me and everything else. No, you can't. They hated Jesus. They'll hate you. You're part of his body if you're saved. Remember that. Verse 19, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Well, not me, Jesus. I, you don't understand. You don't. Have, you see how things have changed and whatever else. Um, see, I'm actually pretty well loved. I'm here at my job, and there's a whole lot of Christians here, and we all we have great times together and everything else. And I just I love life, and uh, you know. Uh, so Jesus was a liar. Things going good for you, huh? They didn't go good for Jesus. Verse twenty. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Jesus was killed by the religious leaders of his day, but you figured out something that he didn't know? Some way to live here on this earth and preach the truth and believe the truth and yet be popular with people? How is the servant greater than his Lord? It should be worse for you. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Hmm. Um, I'm going to be talking a lot more about nonconformity in the future. I'm going to be, you know, saying a lot of other things about it. But this, these are the only scriptures I'm going to go over, because this is just kind of the introduction to a whole bunch of sermons coming out the, about this whole thing. Uh, I've talked about it with many, many brethren over the years, and just said there are certain dividing lines that are happening and there's gonna be a whole future sermon on this but you know bible version issue okay there are people that are using the new versions and years ago they could have had excuses well you know obviously the christian the <clears throat> christian bookstores they're not going to bring out you know materials from king james bible believers king james only type of materials because that hurts the sales of their new versions you know and it's divisive you know and all the deal but now that there's the online world there's just you want to know about the Bible version issue, you can learn all you need to know in minutes, you know, or at least find the sources that you can read in minutes. Okay. Um, so somebody uses, uses militantly uses new versions and, and rejects the King James Bible, lost. It's a dividing line. Okay, you see? Um, you're on the Bible-believing side here, saved. 
or at least that's good. New version over here, Vatican versions that come from Vaticanus and Sinaiticus and all the corrupt Westcott and Hort and all that other stuff, Nessel Aland and, and you know, Second Vatican Council saying that we need to make translations together with separated brethren, you know, the whole, you're over on that side, lost instantly. Dividing line, you see. Dividing line, another one would be the thing of going to church, okay? Again, a lot of people innocently, very ignorantly were going to those places, just were raised in them or whatever else and just mind controlled and you're sitting there going, uh, something just doesn't seem right here, but I don't know what it is and, you know, this is kind of weird and why do we have to do this? And all of a sudden, the Lord helped myself and a number of brethren to come out and really start hammering the church building thing and we got all the arguments back and forth and I hashed it out with people and showed the, the origin of the church buildings and, and the fact that you're living two separate lives and that's not there in Scripture. No verses of Scripture saying go to church or we went to church or we're going to church. No Sunday best, no altar calls, no 10% tithe, no you know Sunday morning worship, you know Wednesday evening prayer service, Sunday school. You know, don't get me going on that one. Vacation Bible school. All of that stuff. So here we go. Dividing line number two. You're going to stick with the church buildings? You're going to say that it, I don't care if it's not in Scripture? I'm going to keep doing it? Sorry. I don't believe you're saved. If you're going to militantly defend what God's Word is not only not in there, but I believe very much against. You say, yeah, okay, I, I see the arguments now. Yeah, I'm going to meet at home. I'm going to meet with other brethren some other place. We're not going to meet in some building and call it a church. Okay, you're on the right side. See, dividing lines. Okay, and there's a whole bunch more. The Godhead Trinity issue is another one. Okay, Godhead is what the Bible teaches. Right? There aren't three persons. There aren't three gods in heaven. Right? There's no scripture at all. You have to add to the scriptures. Adding to the scriptures makes you a liar, the Bible says. You have to twist all kinds of things. And this Trinity Godhead thing has been worked out and hashed out and this argument and that argument and whatever else. And we've answered the objections from the Trinitarians, right? They have no leg to stand on, right? You stay, still want to stay on the Trinity side with the Roman Catholics on that side there? Okay, lost. Sorry, you're lost, right? If, you're, if you believe the Godhead, but you're using some Trinitarian language, well... You have some issues there. You need to get over fully onto what the Bible says and drop the Trinitarian language. All right. I'm not going to judge somebody too harshly if they believe that Jesus Christ is wholly, completely God. All right. Body, soul, spirit is the three there, the three separate. But he's just one God. All right. But they're using Trinity in persons and whatever. Okay. I'm not going to judge them too harshly. I'm just going to say, hey, you drop that language there. All right. But we've talked about this thing. Uh, myself and other brethren, what is the final dividing line? And the very final dividing line, I believe, is the issue of conformity. Are you going to conform to the world? Um, this whole wacky coronavirus thing and whatever else, um, I believe is starting something that's going to be very uncomfortable for most Christians. Again, one of you brought out the point, and I've repeated it now a couple times. Um, you can only pretend that you're a Christian for so long. Well, what happens if now all of a sudden in the future, being a Bible-believing Christian means uh, you're going to get persecuted, possibly even thrown in jail, considered an um, extremist or whatever else? What happens then? See, um, you can pretend that you're a Christian in a country that has religious freedom. But what happens when that religious freedom goes away? And now they start trying to tell you to do things that go against the scriptures. And you have to say, I'm not doing that. Oh, well, sir, that's, uh, well, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Do we have to call the police, sir, and, and whatever else? See, nonconformity is going to get more and more and more important in the lives of Bible-believing Christians. Um, Everybody is required to come down to the local hospital, the local doctor's office, and you have to have your blood tested to see if you've had COVID-19, you know, and, and whatever else to make sure that you're safe. We have to keep you safe by taking your blood. No. I'm not conforming. But all your neighbors have gone. Uh, your next door neighbor, he's a nice guy. They're nice people. And your, and, and your aunt and your uncle and, your, and the people, some of the people at your church, 
And everybody else, I'm not going. I will not conform. No. Um, uh, we have to, 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 you know, we're worried about fake news on the internet. And so we're going to have to have you just, just, you know, fill out a questionnaire. We're going to have to have some representative come to see you. And, and we're going to have to have a little talk. No. I won't conform. Go away. I am a nonconformist. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world. I'm not doing it. Well, then there's, you know, there's some ramifications that could come up and, you know, and, and whatever else. Um, let me get real radical. You need to register your firearms. No! I'm not doing it. Well, we're just doing it to keep you safe. No! Nonconformity! Um, you can't take a real strong stand against the Catholic Church. No! I will not conform. Hey, we just came out with these new standards on YouTube. We have to end anti-Catholic bias because, um, you know, Trump said so. Sorry, not happening. I love Catholics too much to remain silent about their wicked system. I care about those Catholic children that are molested by the pervert priests and nuns and monks and whoever else. I care too much about the Catholics to be quiet about their satanic system. I will not be quiet. So, well, then we're going to shut you down. Go ahead and may the wrath of God fall upon you. It's just that simple. You see, I believe the final dividing line is quickly coming. It is, it is very fast approaching. Everybody's saying, you know, man, it looks like the rapture is going to happen very soon. The resurrection. It, we, it could be any time now. I hope so. But brethren, if we're forced to be here, we're getting closer to that Antichrist system. It's coming. It's, it's getting closer. And they're going to start to do certain things. They're going to say, we need to start socially engineering people to make new, the, the whole Antichrist system become the new norm. You're going to have to use biometrics. We're going to have to put 5G towers around in your neighborhood. We're going to have to do these things that some people might be a little bit uncomfortable with, but you know what? We have to do it. No, I will not. Oh, but, but, you know, I, I think that, I think you should, if you, you know, I, I'm a Christian too. I'm a Christian. <laughs> you see that with these goons, you know, well, I'm, I'm also a Christian and I'm doing it. I don't have a problem with it. You're a conformist. You're not a Christian. If the world loves you, then you don't know Jesus Christ. Period. I get along with all my relatives. Then you're lost. I get along with everybody down at work. You're lost and on your way to hell. YouTube loves to monetize my videos. YouTube loves to promote my channel. Then you're lost. Period. You are a lost conformist. You better be a nonconformist. That is the final dividing line. I will guarantee you that. I will promise you that. And think about the testimony that we can leave behind. Think about it. All these people in the future, you're going to have to take the mark of the beast. Or else you can't buy or sell. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine that? A lot of times I go to the grocery store, you know, and, and times I'll use my debit card or whatever else, and, and I do the thing, and I, you know, put in the number and whatever else, and, I, and I'm watching the screen, and it says, approved. And I always think, what's it going to be like to be at, at a time where it says, not approved? Um, and, the, and the, you know, I see the cash register, cash register woman, you know, kind of nervously, um, um, sir, could you please give me a minute here? And, you know, and, and I see, you know, they push some little button with their foot or something, you know, and all of a sudden here comes the burly goons over and they're saying, uh, right this way, sir, we need to talk to you, please. You know, pull you out of line and whatever. That stuff's coming. That stuff's coming. I hope we get caught up before, but I don't know. I don't know. It could get really rough. It has been in the past for other Christians. Are you going to conform? Are you going to go along with it? Or are you simply going to say No. Be not conformed to this world. I'm not doing it.
hey, uh, the world hates you. Well, that's what the Bible says is going to happen to me. I mean, study the life of Jesus Christ, who Jesus Christ really is. I'm not talking about the Antichrist that the modern Christians worship. The, my Jesus would never do that. My Jesus would never you know, be mean to people. My Jesus, yeah, your Jesus is the Antichrist, okay? You're worshiping Satan, all right? The Jesus of the King James Bible, you know the one that went to the religious leaders of his day and said, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Can you imagine that? Here comes the Pope, Pope Francis, and he's, and he's, uh, you know, bless you, bless you, yes, bless you, bless you. And some guy stands up and says, ye serpent, ye generation of, you know, that's what Jesus did. You know what the world did? Who does this guy think he is? That's that homeless guy. No, well, he puts on a good show with healing people and everything else, but, uh, as soon as the Jewish leaders say, he needs to be crucified. The crowd goes from Hosanna to the high, you know, to crucify him, crucify him. Hey, Brian puts out some really good videos. Oh, I've been entertained for years. He's got that dry, sarcastic wit. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And all of a sudden, whatever organization comes out and says, we got him, what should we do with him? And the Catholics and the Jesuits and whatever else and the religious and the atheists and all the religious wing nuts say, crucify him. You think people are going to say, no, come on, no, that's too extreme. They're going to be saying, kill him, crucify him. I know it. <laughs> I know that people want me dead. Good night. I've had attempts made all my life that I don't talk about. Whatever. You say, well, Brian, you really ought to conform, though. Think about your wife. Think about your little boy. Think about him. I am, and I'm thinking about heaven, too. I want my wife and my son to be with me in heaven and not have to be ashamed up there. You know, daddy was a little bit yellow. Spineless coward. Went along with it. And, and by the way, you know, when you go along with this satanic world and you go along with these standards and whatever else, they don't just say, okay, do this here for a little bit, and then you go on and just be free. When you give tyrants power, when you submit to tyrannical government, it only gets worse. They only control your life more. Every country that did gun control, that confiscated, at first they register. It's every single time. The Jews for, for the Protection of Firearms brought out a great documentary. Can't think of what it's called. Innocence Betrayed, I think, is what it's called. They came out with this documentary years ago and they showed the proof every single society where they register the guns they confiscate them next every single time and you know what follows bloody genocide every time every single time oh but it starts out we're just trying we, we're not going to take oh my we're not going to take your guns we're just going to register them see jesus said in luke chapter 22 sell your garment and buy a sword so don't give me this thing of, well, Jesus was a pacifist. Jesus came to die, okay, to pay for sins. But he's going to fight the next time he comes back. He's not a pacifist, right? Pacifism is wicked. It's satanic. But the whole point is, you are supposed to protect yourself and the lives of those around you, your loved ones. But the government wants to come along and they want to keep you safe and say to you, hey, just all we're trying to do, we're not going to confiscate. We just want you to register. Just want to make sure that everything's legal and all the I's dotted and the T's crossed and everything else. And you register your guns. You conform. And guess what? Middle of the night. Come to the door. What's going on? SWAT team outside. We're here for your firearms, sir. There's a, there's been another virus, you know, the coronavirus is here. So we're here to get people's guns because you have to leave the area here. You know, again, that's been done here in America. They, they tell people to leave their home because of some pandemic or some kind of a, whatever else, a natural disaster or whatever. They tell people you need to evacuate, forcibly evacuate. The people come home, their guns are gone. And the police say, oh yeah, well, we had to come and get them just, you know, to make sure that nobody's broken and stolen. Well, you broke in and stole them. If your blood is not boiling by what's going on right now in this world, oh boy, 
I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say. Um, we are supposed to be a loving, uh, very peaceful people, and we are. But we also have rights that are that are promised to us by God, and um, those rights are not to be taken away for any reason, any reason at all. And uh, most rights are simply when they're taken away, it's because of people consenting to those right or to those things. Uh, why? Because they don't want to look weird. They don't want to be that weird person that lives in the neighborhood that won't give up their guns or that won't put on the face mask or that won't do the whatever. Um, I don't want to drive a junky vehicle because all my neighbors have new vehicles. I don't want to live in a junky house because all my neighbors have nice places. I don't want to wear this type of clothing because, you know, all the other you know things out there. You see, you're a conformist. Um, free people need to be non-conformists. Just that simple. If you're lost, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, I would suggest that you better, you know, get a personal relationship with Him because He's the because He's the ultimate non-conformist. You say, well, no, I don't. I'm not really okay. Well, then you're going out on your own. It's going to be rough. Um, I'll put my faith in God. Um, they want to shut my channel down. Uh, you're going too far. You're too extreme. Whatever. Shut it down. <laughs> you know. Sometimes I think it'd be doing me a favor. You know. It, you want to be that narrow-minded, bigoted, and whatever else. And shut down a preacher and things. I know that they've already censored my channel for many, many years. Shut it down. Go ahead. See what God does to you. All right. Censored the free spree speech of a preacher. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. <laughs> All right. But I'm not going to conform, ever, for any reason. I pray this has been a real challenge to you, brethren, because I do believe that the final dividing line is here now. And this wicked, tyrannical system, it's not just America. I mean, it's any country out there, uh, except for Sweden, I guess they still haven't. I don't know. Maybe they have by now, but they weren't uh, doing this whole quarantine thing and destroying their economy. Um, you know, to bring in the Mark of the Beast system. I don't know how that whole thing works, but, you know, as far as them not doing it and the rest doing it, it's kind of weird, but uh, all the countries are doing this. So it's not, well, I have to be a nonconformist, but you can be a, uh, a conformist or something. Uh, no, it doesn't work that way. We all have to be nonconformists. We all have to stand up and fight and say, eh, no, no, I'm not wearing that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not, you're not taking my blood. You're not going to vaccinate me. I don't think so. Or are you a vaxxer? Whatever you want to call me, I'm not taking your stupid vaccine. You're not going to pump a bunch of chemicals into my bloodstream, put a bunch of thimerosal, you know, mercury, in, directly into my blood. Uh-uh. No, no, not happening. Um, <laughs> just the way it is, I could go off about this for an hour. Um... I just pray if the Holy Spirit is convicting you, I mean, what, what's the worst that they can do? Kill you? Go home to be with the Lord. But enough, if enough of us stand up and say, no, um, we Christians, we Bible believers are nonconformists. Um, you're not just going to come in here and tell us what to do. We're very peaceful people. We don't want violence. We don't want problems and whatever else. But you're bringing it to us. And we're not going to conform to you. Period.